time now for our weekly news segment. There we go. And suddenly now you can view Reddit. Screw you, Reddit. Uh, so yeah, that's you can use this to bypass that basically. Uh, so first first story of oh, the man. week. Uh, sorry if you can hear that. Someone being loud with the motorcycle outside. Uh, integration of ETH XMR atomic swaps into a wallet GUI front end deployed to Arbitrum. About 10 months ago, Athenor Labs released an ETH XMR atomic swaps on Ethereum mainnet. However, it has very little liquidity due to poor UX being CLI only and high fees on Ethereum mainnet making small swaps repeatedly expensive. Yeah, Ethereum gas fees. These things are needed to improve the situation. Integration of a GUI interface into a popular GUI wallet, such as Monero Core or Cake Wallet, deployment to an Ethereum L2 with low fees and high liquidity. Currently, Arbitrum has the most liquidity by far, with Optimism as a distant second, and cheap fees. Those fees about to become an order of magnitude cheaper after the Decon hard fork of March 13th this year. Second item is pretty straightforward to do since major Ethereum L2s, all EVM compatible. Have there been any traction, development, and integration of a GUI interface into a GUI wallet for the ETH XMR? Okay, I think this is more of a question um, than news. Um, okay, okay. Uh, news related, though, I heard talk of um, MoneroCon having a hackathon, which Monerotopia is looking to do, by the way, too. Um, actually, when we had Monerotopia last year, Luke Parker, who was at Monerotopia, was saying, hey, we should have a, a hackathon here next year. Um, so he kind of in inspired that thinking. And I know MoneroCon is planning on having one. And I think I saw the topic of ETH to XMR topic swaps potentially being part what of the that. hackathon will be about. Yeah, like kind of making it usable, right? So nice. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ethereum, Elizabeth Banks has, has Yeah, she's been working on progress. that for a while, haven't she? Yeah, but I, I guess I guess we need people now to kind of build apps around it or make it more usable. I'm obviously not tech savvy enough to truly understand, but I, I, my understanding is kind of uh, that's where we're at, right? We need to now, you know, build out a user interface around the, the tech. Mm -hmm, for sure. Right. All right. Moving on. Uh, so this is this is interesting. Argentina to regulate cryptocurrency exchanges with executive order. Yeah, what's up with uh, that? The government of Argentina is reportedly preparing to regulate cryptocurrency service providers with an executive order. The measure would be directed to keep Argentina out of the Financial Action Task Force gray list, putting crypto service leaders under the oversight of local securities watchdog. Uh, the government of Argentina is putting its sights on regulating cryptocurrency service providers by an executive order, according to reports from local media. President Javier Malay will be preparing to issue an emergency decree to create a framework that would regulate the operation of these, putting it under the oversight of National Securities Watchdog. Uh, it, would, it would be keeping Argentina out of the gray list of the Financial Action Task Force where the country was included from 2010 to 2014 due to its lax money laundering policies. Uh, the upcoming visit of the FATF programmed to assess the country's money laundering countermeasure would be fueling the measure. Uh, so that's, um, well, well, I guess I guess people in Argentina will have to see how that would affect um, exchanges uh in that industry but it is a shame that they're sort of like bowing down to and i mean it's unfortunately there's a lot of external pressure on like especially smaller countries and second world countries from the big countries uh that control a lot of the world's finances so unfortunately it looks like they're sort of um falling on that a little bit yeah, I'm just bringing up, I'm bringing up a tweet that I sent out this week. Uh, you want to know where a man really stands on liberty, individualism, and the state? Ask him his stance on Monero, or better yet, watch how he treats it. So, uh, Malay, right? I mean, I think we, we all were kind of hoping, thinking, wishing, still, I still am, that, you know, Malay uh, is what he claims to be, right? An anarcho-capitalist, um, seems to be very pro-crypto, pro just viewing it as a tool, money itself as a tool, letting all monies fairly compete. Uh, but this this is pretty concerning, consi considering it's an executive order, right? It's coming directly from him trying to implement this to usher in of, uh... usher in these these rules. What's that? It's kind of in direct opposition of to like his his like you know his position historically yeah. on uh, recently yeah. on like government like doing stuff with the market. Right. So I mean, and, and I see people kind of explaining why that's the case, um, but he is you know ultimately he's bending the knee here, right? Uh, Gambat says Argentina is being pressured by the FATF, the Financial Action Task Force 
which by the way, we, we've spoken about them quite, quite a bit on this show in various forms, had been interviews with people talking about them. Uri Bednar was kind of one of the first people to really open my eyes to, to this. I mean, that this, this association, this global uh, regulatory board that basically creates the, the, the policy that eventually gets adopted by all the major economies in the world. Um, and they're, they're not elected. It's not an elected group of people. Um, and they sit around, and they come up with these rules, and everybody adopts them because they're basically is basically you know a gang, and they're they're telling you know if you don't adopt you adopt these or else, right? So uh, this is the situation Malay is basically in, and he he's he's bending the knee here. Gambetta is saying Argentina is being pressured by the FATF in a time where international credit access is key, given the imminent and critically needed dollarization. So they're basically he's basically forced to play by their rules and he has to take action to move Argentina out of being a, I guess, a, what do they call it? A gray, a gray market. Gray, uh, yep. Yeah. Gray market economy. If he wants to um, be able to, I guess, uh, move over to the dollar. Um, so he's, he's doing it for supposedly that's, you know, the argument as to why he's doing it, which I guess makes sense. Um, so is it, is it, is it good? I don't know. Is, is is a necessary evil? Is this what he needs to do to bring his country out, out of the mess it's in? Um, obviously, ideally, we'd like to see him just say, you know, fuck all that. Uh, crypto is money and just let the bus money win. Um, but he appears to be bending the knee here. It might be a might be a balance move. We'll just have to see how that plays out. But, uh... My my ultimate fear with Malay when he when he, you know when he first won I, the theories I was throwing out there is this just unfortunately become a scenario where uh, actually he ends up eliminating the kind of the the black markets of Argentina uh, through uh, the 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 policies that he creates and ironically makes it a, a place that's maybe less amenable to to crypto and going in and out of crypto from cash to crypto. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's my concern. Um, there's another. I don't know if you have the other article. It talks about the. Uh, I, I had sent it to Tony. Also, our, maybe it's the next one you have on your list. Uh, let me see. Yep, pull that up. Yeah, pull that one up. This is also also related. Oh, I don't see it. Oh. Yes. Argentines have over a hundred billion us in undeclared cryptocurrencies and we want to wow. keep it that way right i yeah. mean that yep. that's the dream right and but what i'm seeing here is so they're talking about this executive order and that's for purposes of of basically creating a like a bit license right where all any crypto company is going to have to uh have kyc aml all that jazz um and bending the knee to the financial asking task force uh, but there's this, this also you're seeing movements here and them talking about the need to or the uh, they want to, they basically they want to create an amnesty where people uh, declare their crypto holdings. Right. And they're trying to create incentives to get people to declare their crypto holdings. So uh, I don't like that. That does not no. seem like a move in the right direction. We want the complete opposite. It right? doesn't we seem want like you the freedom able, move. We want you to be able to roll in there with your Monero in hand and not have to worry about declaring it. Um, you know, it's your Monero. You have it. You could use it as uh, at your will. It's like cash. Um, but they're talking about the potential of uh, forcing people to declare their crypto holdings. This coming from the Melee administration. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, people, uh, people that are more familiar with these things in Argentina. But this is the this is what I'm following. This is what I'm saying. So maybe maybe the whole um like pro like um you know like freedom money cryptocurrency thing is just to pull more people into like the system because right now the black market of Argentina mm -hmm. is like is very much out of that. Exactly. Which, even though like it's a black market, it's actually very you know it's free. It's pretty free. Uh, and maybe maybe this is a case to try and pull people like more into these uh these more controlled like ways of doing finances but andres is saying they cannot force anyone 
Yeah, Andres, pop up if you can for the viewers on stage. You give us your insights into all this. Um, but yeah. All I know is right now you could go down to Argentina, or you know, as of as of a few months ago when I was there, you could effectively go down to Argentina with with crypto. You can roll into a, a, a cueva, a, you know, a, the caves, and you could swap your crypto for local cash. Um, are are we slowly moving away from that potentially? So we'll, we'll have to yeah. we'll have to make a uh, dedicated Mineratopia Cuevo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One there, so people can just. I know, yeah, we'll definitely <laughs> have one there. Definitely, definitely. All right. Um, so uh, this was posted by Sir Jams a lot. Yes, uh, yeah, yesterday. So um, this was pretty last minute, but they have decided to have a. Monero meetup in Denver. Uh, so you're Sir Jams a lot. You, I think you did a, you did a Monero talk with him uh, a couple days ago, right? I don't know if that's out. Yeah, we did. I just had him on last night, um, and actually Luke Parker jumped on because he was at, <laughs> at the conference, and uh, Seth. Um, I forget his name. The other Seth, not Seth for privacy. He's also uh, well known in, in the crypto community. He jumped on as well. Um, and yeah, they uh, he's doing he's doing a lot. If you could bring up some of his tweets, Sir Jams a lot has been is been really uh, doing a lot to to help grow Monero adoption with boots on the ground at ETH Denver. He's been there all week, um, onboarding people. He had a Kuno going. Uh, he's trying to he was trying to raise money for that. So I recommend you guys donating to him. He's putting it to good use, and he's been there all week hooking up people with cryptocurrency or with Monero obviously yeah I've been, I've been seeing his videos pop up he's been doing a really good job um just going up to people and asking them about monero giving them stickers giving them a little bit of monero showing them how to set up the wallet uh but yeah, they're having go ahead, oh, you go pull something up no, okay go ahead, yeah, go ahead, they're having a xmr denver meetup tomorrow uh at 5 p.m at that address uh being sponsored by cake wallet so if you're in that area and you want to go chill with some Monero people, go talk about some Monero stuff, some privacy projects, then uh, that's happening. That's super co cool that that just came together. So once again, that's, yeah. that's all Sir Jams a lot. He took the initiative. He's out there and he's like, you know what? Let me throw a meetup when I'm out there. We've, we've done that as well. We were very successful with that in Argentina. Uh, and there's thousands of people at ETH Denver. So it's not that inconceivable to now have a bunch of people show up at this meetup. And yeah, Cake, as always, Vic, you know, stepped up. He, he saw the, uh, I don't know if, it, if Vic reached out to them or he reached out to Vic, but uh, Vic, you know, uh, agreed, I think, to, to sponsor this event, which is super cool, off the cuff. Um, but guys, people, uh, if, you know, follow, do the same, do a little Kuno, go to a, go to a local libertarian event in your, in your area and promote Monero, uh, go, to a, go to a conference, go to a crypto conference, get the word out on Monero. People are very open to it and understanding of it and beginning to realize that, you know, Bitcoin is not private and they, they, they want, you know, when you, when you explain to them that Monero is what Bitcoin was supposed to be, mo most people are, are intrigued. Most noobs are intrigued, are intrigued by that. Yeah. He seems to do a good job at getting people curious. Also, uh, we got Andres in the backstage. Um, should I pull him up and see if he wants to, Say anything about the Argentinian executive order? Yeah, pull him up, pull him up. This is one of uh, Sir Jams a lot's posts. He tell he tells a story about this girl on Monero Topia. So tune in uh, Monero talks. So tune into that. But yeah, he was onboarding people all week. Very cool. Andres, what's up, man? How are you? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Cheers, Great. brother. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's real one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do you what do you think? What do you think about this Malay situation? Is he not uh, a Monero man? I I always so, sound like uh, I'm running the running the party with with Malay takes from my brother. But I mean, if he if he does half of what he says he's gonna do, is is it's gonna be amazing okay but uh, with regards to crypto i don't think it's a crypto president 
uh, I think it's a uh, with all if we are lucky it's a libertarian president but it's not a crypto president and and what I mean by that is that I don't think he's like pro crypto above everything else I think he spoke several times about the liberty or the freedom of currencies he's not even saying a uh, dollarization directly he's very careful about that because dollarization, dollarization would, would mean that we basically get rid of the peso officially and the government adopts the US dollar, uh, which is some super stupid to clarify that here on this kind of program. But some people still think that it means something else. Okay, so if you officially dollarize, I mean, the government has to, is in charge of getting enough dollars to dollarize the economy. Uh, basically, the US has to give the dollars to them. And that's the whole, the, the way it works. We replace it. And what Millet has already said is other are there more, are there more US dollars in Argentina than like anywhere else in the world? Probably, the probably. Yes. Probably <laughs> even more. No, I think I, I, I never remember. I should, I should look that I up, Russia but I think, too. yes, I think we were like third okay. in the podium uh, after Russia, like the US, Russia, and then Argentina, uh, which is crazy. If you take into, into account the, the size of our economy. Uh, which is not super small, but it's it's not super big by any standards. So yes, but basically that's what you get. I mean, besides the realization thing, uh, what Malik has said is freedom of, uh, of of choosing your own currency, right? So yeah, yeah. supposedly the government is going to raise all the barriers on and all the limitations for you or for any other private party to make contracts in whatever coin you want. You want to use Bitcoin, you want to use Monero, just do it. Uh, for example, uh, I was doing uh, yesterday an episode of the Café Monero with a lawyer specialized in crypto in Argentina from the from the Bitcoin Argentina NGO. Oh, um, very cool. One of the things, yeah, um, maybe you should you should get him. Uh, maybe maybe it'd be a good speaker show. for for the conference. But yeah, go ahead. Ah, go for, ahead. for sure, that for sure. Mm. Um, and I think you maybe you even met him when you were here at La Bitconf. Okay. Uh, on the, Yes, he was on the on our first Monero meetup. Oh, okay. Yeah, cafe, yeah, 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 yeah. The tall, tall guy, tall guy. Yes, a tall guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I forgot what I'm saying. Uh, basically, uh, that that would be nice because the way the, the law worked before, for example, you could have a, a contract made in Monero, right? But uh, if the contract was not fulfilled. Uh, a judge could say basically that you well okay since the guy cannot pay you in monero you can pay the other guy back in pesos for the whatever amount of monero that the judge believes is fair mm -hmm. so that's a big risk especially when you have an economy based on pesos which is a very lousy currency so nobody in real life nobody wanted to either sign or make a, a, a contract with monero so now with the proposed changes, I suppose, from, from the decree. And so far, so good. I mean, so far, it's been applied. Um, the, right. So, the so if, that if, you're, that if, if you, make you have a contract, a contract Monero, ahead, the other guy ahead, has sorry. to give you the Moneros. Basically, that's, that's, that's the thing. If you make right. a job arrangement and you, your, your employer is going to pay you in Moneros, the employer has to pay you in Moneros. <clears throat> and that's a big, it sounds like a very subtle thing, but no, it's believe big. me, it, it's, it's super big. Um, no, but course, about, about like um, fights the decree, so it still remains to be seen that if that becomes like a very fixed law and lasts for years, but that's the same the thing for with everything else. And the same with this um, supposed executive order to regulate exchanges, for what I've been told, for people close to the subject. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing that happens with, with centralized exchanges abroad, right? Some of them are more than willing are eager to get more regulation of course regulatory because capture they see, yes they see their the business growing some of them are not some of those are are, are are really run by OG's crypto that want something else but it's a it's an ongoing fight uh i don't see i don't see much future on that fight i think if argentina comes a little bit out of poverty and get a bit more into a serious country economic wise is going to for sure come, come with all the regulations and all the kyc aml 
and all those rules. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you have experienced it, it firsthand when you were here. Things are pretty so, free. I mean, as long as you manage in cash, <laughs> you have pretty off the hook with everything that you want to do, either uh, earning uh, from your job uh, in the black, so to speak, and also um, spending a life uh, and live in cash. You can do, do that you, pretty easily. Do you see him potentially uh, eliminating capital gains tax on crypto transactions, so treating it like like money? So obviously, so the, the, he's taken the step and, and allowed it to to be used in, in contracts, right? Like uh, yes. you know, like any other legal tender. But do you see it him potentially so actually far, treating it like cash from a so tax far, perspective? We had last night. We had the like the State of Union address, right? From him at the beginning of the Congress. And so far, he's been pretty consistent uh, on his ideals or the things that he says is going to apply. So in that regard, if I had to bet, I would bet that, yeah, crypto eventually becomes money and you, you don't pay. The wow. Guy. Uh, that would be amazing. That, that, would, that be would be amazing, amazing right? Uh, on one side. On the other side, uh, if it's considered like cash, uh, I don't see why they are not going to try to get as much uh, into the white as possible. I mean, it's one thing that you became rich because you are holding crypto and it's okay. Just use your earnings in the, in the economy, right? <laughs> make it, make it better. It's another thing for him to say that he's against taxes because the tax is, is theft and is 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 robbing you of your property mm -hmm. uh, so it makes sense for him to try to eliminate as much taxes as possible but that doesn't mean that he's okay with the black market so well that yeah that's so that's my, my next question subtle... do, do you think my theory is correct in that like at the end of the day if if all if things work out for malay and what he's what he's trying to achieve um that the black market will be greatly reduced if not kind of gone my nuanced response would be that yeah but i think you're right but it will be really depend on ne the next uh, elections in two years mm -hmm. because i think i think because basically all that uh, is sustained it's the same with the we call here blanqueos i don't know how how they're called in english when you basically allow people that have black money to say Okay, your money is white again. You just have to pay the government a, 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 a amount, a percentage of that. Um, so there were some experiments in the past uh, in Argentina about that. And what everybody is looking is, okay, you are giving me that, that option. We have a really huge black market. Forget about crypto. It's just cash. But it's the same for crypto. We are For the next two months, we are allowing everybody that got rich from having Bitcoin 10 years ago to basically make it legal and put it on your local exchange or whatever and pay taxes. Um, perhaps you are super f eager to do that because you have so much money because you were like a very lucky Argentinian from 10 years ago and you want to buy a house, which is a registered property. So basically, where did you get your money from for the house? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not the same as, as buying a steak. Okay, mm -hmm. so many people, many people, when they see that, they are a bit scared. They don't, they, they don't just jump into the opportunity and say, "Yeah, let's make all our money white," <laughs> because they, mm -hmm. okay, maybe it's okay with you, but who's gonna win the next election? Are you gonna be prosecuted for that? Uh, they're gonna raise my taxes a lot because of that. I'm suddenly I'm like a rich person, so I, I have a, a, a new tie. A, a new level of taxes that I have to pay. I have to pay on my on my super um, on all the money that I have because it's like a yearly yearly tax on my money or something like that. So people are very suspicious of that. So so I think here now we are seeing like the bad part. The the, the we have a like a full blown recession, mm -hmm. inflation going through the roof and recession at the same time. So. Almost everybody is losing money or losing purchasing power very fast, very, very fast. Things are not looking good. But if we get through this part and can we start to pick up and he does well in next elections, 
that would be sent that would send like a very strong message not only to the world for investments also for Argentina and also that it's okay it's okay we can bring money back into the country we can make money back into the white because it looks like the majority of Argentinians are ag agree that this is the path forward mm. Mm. remember that now he's like elected with like a 60% of the votes, whatever. It's, mm -hmm. He made like a great election, but he has very few um, uh, congressmen, deputies and on the Senate as well. So for everything that is like a fixed law and it's going to last, he needs a lot of, of uh, either win in the next elections a lot of seats or get a lot of, a lot of um, support from other parties. How about this idea that he's potentially trying to get everybody to disclose their their holdings <laughs> good luck <laughs> but it, it, do you think they're gonna like, try to try to do that i think he i think he will try to do that yes for sure for sure i don't know but it's not it's nothing new the the last government that had like a like a right-leaning kind of thing uh try that he had like a very successful Blanqueo and uh, many people did because they were on the fences or on the side and they wanted to actually buy property or buy cars or whatever and they they, they took the opportunity for but I don't think that that moves that much the needle of how much money we need in the in the in the white economy so to speak um, mm. I think it's a it's a gesture towards let's let's make it all <laughs> in the clear <laughs> but i people it's cultural it's been many 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 years of not trusting the government with disclosing your money mm -hmm. so it's very ingrained it's like people the it's like the bank's deposits in the u.s right. it's like banks are the safest place that you can put your money in and here is like that's not true it happened more than once <laughs> that, right that, that that's that's why there's they're so you know that's that's yeah. really the mission the mission is for them they're trying to uh eliminate the black market and get everybody to disclose their their assets i feel like that that's what that's that's the ultimate uh mission that's happening here they i don't cannot, know they, uh, they can they cannot force people that's what i that's what i yeah. i mean i don't see much success on that what i mm -hmm. do believe is that yes the cultural um the culture of having your own money and have your money is like hidden in your house in stack of dollars or whatever or having crypto and not declare that's very powerful we mm -hmm. don't trust nobody trusts no government but what i've seen is that yeah that is not like ideological stance so much as we would like to believe it's only practical. It's like, okay, they, they, I mean, I lost all my, my money on the, in the bank 10 years ago. I'm not putting my money back in the bank again ever. And then you say, oh, that looks like a, a narco capitalism. No, they've just been robbed and they don't want the same thing to happen to them twice. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if they make it practical, what I'm, going, what I'm going for is that if they make it practical, if they make it enticing, if they start like making it a bit more uncomfortable to to deal in the black market, if they start mm -hmm. to not releasing any new bills, so when you yeah. try to pay twenty thousand pesos, you have to bring a stack like this. That I totally see working because I'm mm, seeing that's... this working daily, yep. daily the past five years a lot, a lot. Now everybody takes QR code payments with uh, f with fintech pro payment processors here, everybody. Mm -hmm. And one oh. of the reasons that the government has been the past government, but so far this one as well, has been very protective of not having those popular, it's like WeChat in China, right? Those popular apps like Mercado Pago, having crypto on it is because all the, all the financial instruments like uh, funds and that, that you can invest inside of those, those um, apps are based in pesos. They pay a lot of interest, but they're based in pesos. The moment that you give even USDT inside of those apps that everybody uses, <laughs> I think the peso goes even lower and even faster because those apps are used I, by I, everyone. I think, you I think can, Malay you can... it mar marks the end of cash in, in Argentina, ironically. Gonna... I've seen people asking for money in the street 
with a QR mm-hmm. code. There you go. Oh my god. See? So like that's, what, that's, I think that's the real it's, enemy. That's the real enemy. Century. Yeah. It's ironic, right? Because I mean, uh, you know, the the fiat has has destroyed destroyed the country in, in many ways. Uh, but the 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 silver lining is there. Every it was a cash economy, and everybody was using cash. Um, and now I feel like that's 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 going to go away. Yeah, we sh- we shall see, man. We shall see. Uh, obviously, Andres is boot, boots on the ground, and we'll be. Uh, We'll be paying very close attention to this because we have Monerotopia down there, and I'm sure uh, maybe we'll get some people to come talk on, on these issues at the conference as well. So, look, just just to, to say like a brief thing about that, for example, mm-hmm. because it gives you the idea. I know that from uh, Germany is very cash based. Okay, they have other historical reasons to be cash based. They don't want the government to have a registry of every citizens. They want to. They, they know that it's bad when a centralized power has uh, almighty knowledge of what the citizens do all the time. Okay? Exactly. Here, it's practical. We don't have that ideological background. Right. Nobody right, got, right. Got, got, got prosecuted for whatever they are spending in right. Or, right. or ostracized. We are very like, racism is not a thing here, for example. Uh, we have like minorities that we persecute or whatever. It's a pretty. And that's like regardless of a progressive uh, country. So we are not oppressing people. We are not prosecuting people. Why people use that much gas? Because they don't want to pay taxes. Because taxes are so high, even small businesses and all that, that it's impossible. It's literally impossible to pay all the taxes that you're required to pay. <laughs> it's over. Sometimes if you do the right math, it's like over 100%. <laughs> so, so crazy that's why the black market economy works that much and people use cash that much because many businesses have to use cash and not give you like an invoice for your purchase but let me think with me again here what happens if Millet does what he says he's gonna do and lowers the taxes a lot yeah this is this is what i'm saying this is, i know i totally agree. this is it's all moving towards yeah. eliminating cash eliminating and the that black would be market. a very liberal thing to do is they say okay taxes are bad it's okay let's get rid mm-hmm. of some taxes and make it yeah. more comfortable and make it more payable and then suddenly you have a lot of commerce that says i don't want to deal with cash it's a lot of cash it's cumbersome mm-hmm. i have to have keep change just pay virtual and then even if Malay doesn't care next year in two years, in four, in whatever years, he lost, he loses again, and we have like a very controlling government, and then you have everybody running on digital money. It's not even, you don't even need a CBDC for that. Interesting. It's just, yeah, I, I, I agree with you on this. Do you think in some way it could be like a sneaky, uh, sneaky compliance right like we're going to kind of make things easier but really we're doing that just so people can get back in the uh the uh, government sanctioned fiat system yeah they're, they're currently opted most people are currently opted out of the system right now which is where we want to be as a narco capitalist and ironically <laughs> the narco capitalist first ever narco capitalist to be elected to a major currency is going to eliminate the <laughs> the parallel economy that exists but look how, how weird it is, know. because many people were, were afraid. I'm against dollarization of the economy, right? I don't think we should solve our monetary problems by adopting somebody else's monetary problems, um, even if they are less worrisome than, than ours, OK? Uh, but many people were like happy when they, they voted for Millet because they were going to get rid of the peso and make, um, put dollars again. And some people were really afraid, and people were buying USD at the black market at whatever rate before the elections because the peso was going to uh, to the floor, whatever. Now you have recession and inflation. But for the past two months, the value of the USD has gone down against the peso for the first time in I don't know how much time. Okay? Mm. And you hear both things that people mad because, yeah, basically everybody that had some kind of saving Put that saving into you in dollars. So now it's mm-hmm. getting more expensive to to have saved. It's very weird. It's very weird. So you don't know what people are gonna prefer, 
right? Because in theory, you say, you want your currency to be strong? For sure. You have all your savings in a, in a less strong currency. Um, well, maybe not, not that strong. You know? <laughs> so, so, but on paper, it's the same that should happen if everything works okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, we are living through weird times. Crazy, all right. man. Crazy. Thanks, Andreas, for that. Andres, greatly appreciate it. And uh, we'll be in touch, man. I want to reach out to you, you know, have a convo about from the uh, South. Monerotopia conference soon. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's move on that with the amazing. news. That was really good. Yeah, glad yeah. we have our own uh, insider. Beautiful. All right. So uh, this understandably made a lot of people in the Monero community pretty, uh, pretty not happy. Uh, so CoinGecko put out this tweet, top privacy blockchains by market cap, and where's Monero? We've got these other smaller ones. Uh, I don't know how much privacy they actually give you, but I guess they're sort of privacy blockchains. We've got Mina, Oasis, Aleph, Dusk, Secret, and Ironfish. Monero is should be number one. It, it is the number one privacy blockchain by market cap. Uh, and of course, they've just conveniently just left it out. Uh, and well, of course, everyone's so, calling so them the out argument I'm hearing is that like the terminology was meant to be something else, like like that they're distinguishing between privacy blockchains and but Monero is a privacy blockchain. Like, is there yeah. some did the did the things? Should, is, I didn't get the memo. I thought I thought Monero and was even, a blockchain. Funny enough, even Zcash, even Zcash was left out, uh, and it should have been yeah. like number two or three. I don't know any of these. I mean, Oasis, I guess I've heard of. Uh, Mina, do you know Mina? What it no, is? Do you know? no, I haven't. I haven't looked into. What any are of these things? Are these are these no even idea. like they're? Are they like decentralized blockchains? I mean, what what are, are they like built on like freaking other blockchains or something? Are they like built on Ethereum or something? Like I don't even know what the fuck this shit is. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> like it makes no sense. So who owns Coin Gecko? Like what's going on here? What's it, what's it? What what are they trying to achieve by doing this? By pretending so some that interesting doesn't things exist. to look into, but they really did just kind of pull this out of their ass, just like oh, privacy blockchains. Here you go, guys. Maybe they're just engage, engaging, engaging, engagement farming, right? Like uh, trying to possibly. Put, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure this thing got a ton of hits because of it. I was like, what? No oh, Monero. So yeah, Monero. The the M the M crypto. Can't talk about the M crypto. It's for it's only for bad people. Well, you can talk so, about Mina. <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. Sorry, Mina. Not <laughs> not the other one. Not the other one. Uh, the Mina's the good M. Uh, Minatopia, baby. <laughs> Uh, so this is from Riot. I literally found a place where you can buy Monero in Niagara Falls. So many people regurgitate what they see on the news about Canada, but I've never seen something like this in the USA. Yeah, is this is this real? Is this like that's awesome? So that I real? guess there's this little shop he found on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls uh, that just has this giant sign that says Monero buy here, and they have, and they a, have an ATM. A, an okay. ATM, yeah. Look, it's got Monero, which is pretty awesome because I still like. In the U.S., this is just like Monero has been so demonized in the U.S. Even though it's not illegal, there's not yeah, any. In Canada, specific... in Canada, I thought it was even more, quote unquote. I honestly, that. I like... thought so too, but um, yeah. so you can it's buy. Legal, it's Monero legal directly. to buy Monero on an ATM in Canada. I guess uh, I, 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 I wasn't aware of that. And is I wonder if it's, is it KYC or. I, I mean, there's probably some K like they'll probably they'll make you use a phone number, right? And some of them mm. ask for an address, but a lot of the times, uh, you you might you know not saying you should, but maybe maybe you can. It's a possibility you could put in some random information. <laughs> one of the one of the first projects I started working on in the Monero space, and we we, got, we had a little test thing going, was selling gift cards for Monero. You know, like you could buy a gift card at a store for, with cash and then obtain Monero. Um, I still think that's a great idea. Rates are horrible. Heard, yeah. Any Bitcoin I've ATM I've used, the rates are just absolutely, they're like practically scams. Um, and here yeah. you can only get Bitcoin. You can't get like Monero on an ATM. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, go into your local 7 Eleven and buy a Monero, Monero card with cash. Um, maybe we'll, we'll get there. We try, I tried to do it back in the day and I honestly yep. just didn't want to yep. deal with the regulations here in New York. 
so it, sc- it scared me off. Uh, we we even printed out the c- printing out the cards and we built a little system, a little test version of it. But we kind of balked at it because of uh, me being New York based, and I was going to try testing it here. Yeah, I know broader I do, I U.S. Think, isn't that bad, but New York especially is very hostile. Yeah, to, the to bit things. license, and you know, you don't want to be a money transmitter. Um, yep. But I, I do think there is a niche there where you can get away with it if, if done the right way. All right. Uh, so next here, we've got uh, from Trocador app. We're proud to announce our news feature. They have this AML scanner. Now, regular users can check the AML risk of funds they have received. No more staying in the dark and only find out they're dirty when they get refused by an exchange. Uh, because with regular cryptos that aren't like Monero, don't have like privacy or uh, fungibility, you can get dirty coins. You can get tainted coins that came from some like like terrorist or whatever, supposedly, right? Whatever the whatever the random reason, uh, really, the terrorist was just too just based. Uh, uh, <laughs> They have that that's, built in now. That's super cool that they built this check. So I guess it uses the chain. Their, they pay for chain analysis, I guess, because I guess they have to for their own compliance. I mean, what's? I, I would love to interview them and understand what's going on here. I mean, it's a super cool tool. I imagine they're paying for it, right, for the service from chain analysis. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they're obviously they're checking the funds. They're getting this data from somewhere, of course. I don't know if they say directly right here where it comes from. It's got to be coming from a chain analysis company. And I I guess they personally are, us- are using the services themselves for their own regulation, right? Yeah, I, I guess so. You can check an address or transaction. Okay, so you can, you can pay to get credits to check individual transactions. But if you're swapping on their platform, You'll go ahead and automatically see that once you receive the funds. They'll tell you. They'll give you the, the rating. Mm-hmm. No wait. Does does Tro- is Trocador the one that kind of taps into multiple exchanges or it's its own? That's correct. Trocador is the aggregator, right. so they, they right. have like tons of different, um, tons of different swap services that they they work with. Mm. Right, so they're not actually even doing the swap, right? They're just kind of they're facilitating it on behalf of other third parties. Right, and then they're going they're going through existing instant swap services. Yeah, they right? go through they look through a bunch and they give you try to give you the best rate out of many different services. Right, but, but from a functional standpoint, like Monero isn't going from you know from user to them into it's just go they're just they're. The Monero, Monero sent to be exchanged there is going into the instant exchange that they're using, right? They're, yeah. Yep. I guess they're, they're not a I the believe so. man in any way. Yeah. No, yeah. Just a, no. That wouldn't make sense for them to do. Yeah, 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 obviously. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a really interesting approach that they're taking. Yeah, and I'm curious um, how the uh, this new tool they built kind of fits into their, their business model. It's pretty cool. All right. Uh, so I'm sure sure a lot of people saw this. Adam Black's history, uh, email history with Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, this was put out last week. Uh, there's some interesting stuff that came out of this. Um, I'm, I'm sure you saw a lot of people who were suddenly not uh, not pleased with the fact that Satoshi was four big blocks, which is kind mm-hmm. of hilarious. Um, and there's this one specific video I want to pull up if I can find it um that i just think uh says a lot there was a uh refer- i don't know if this is where you're pulling up but about where he's talking about like uh eliminate don't talk about the fact that bitcoin is anonymous oh uh, somebody somebody saying that uh yeah i don't relevant. know relevant no it was like satoshi oh he satoshi like tell- yeah like telling them who, who uh the guy he was communicating i don't know if it was this email batch or another one it was that the the uh, young guy he was communicating with that was kind of helping him with the website at the time, and he had Satoshi said basically uh, take down the part where you're talking about uh, it being anonymous. <laughs> like we don't want we don't want we don't want to say those things. Yeah, they didn't want to like thought, have it killed for being like a criminal yeah, thing before yeah. it even like became a thing. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah. now it's completely the opposite. It's gone yeah. the opposite direction, uh, all the way. Um, so yeah, there's just people who are, uh, 
so this video this video is kind of weird um this guy's like ranting about the fact that people are speculating on satoshi uh and i think it's related to people are people are not happy about what satoshi has been saying in these emails so now they're moving into a direction of kind of just discrediting him as like oh bitcoin's bigger than satoshi like they worshiped him before and mm -hmm. now it's like oh bitcoin's it's different satoshi couldn't have envisioned what it would have been 10 years later kind of there's just just general like change of yeah, like uh, yeah. it's it's yeah uh, uh i'm pretty pissed off uh, uh, watch the cope and, i mean just kind of a little disheartened by the bitcoin community to be totally candid um you guys gotta stop speculating on who satoshi is you gotta stop that shit it's so fiat of you it's childish it's <laughs> fuck it's it is i mean it's it's so fiat you sound like a bunch of frat brothers um trying to social climb up the curve um you gotta cut that shit out it's so childish it's also extremely fucking dangerous. Um, it's extremely dangerous. I know my parents have had the pleasure of getting to meet uh, Fran Finney, Hal's wife, and um, it is terrifying the amount of shit that she's had to go through even before this. It is so dangerous to put someone in that position to be the creator of Bitcoin and potentially the world's first trillionaire. And then on top of that, just the disrespect to the guy or girl or they group, whatever, that clearly only wanted one thing. They only wanted to be anonymous, clearly. When did Satoshi Nakamoto ever, ever ask for anything else from us, right? Bitcoin was a gift to enrich humanity. And shit coins are to enrich a small group of people right? That's the whole thing. If this was a shit coin and it was, you guys want to go smear and attack Vitalik? I'm never really for destruction of another human, but if someone's launching something to enrich themselves and you think they're being malicious or deceiving, that's, that's a totally different ballgame. This person gifted humanity with something and everyone listening to this podcast probably gained an immense benefit from it. And the one fucking thing that they wanted is to just be left alone and just be left anonymous. And none of us have bulletproof evidence. And so all you're doing is disrespecting this person that gifted us something so incredible. You're endangering other people and you're acting like fucking fiat. So that's our funny, uh, funny clip of the day. Uh, thank you, Mr. Soapbox, for uh, <laughs> suddenly bashing everyone for speculating about Satoshi just because uh, the general Bitcoin ethos does not agree with a lot of Satoshi's recent comments, which is just hilarious. That's just... They're, it was they're constantly <laughs> treating things like a religion and yeah. not like a yep. technology. Uh, that's, that's the problem. All right. I think this is, uh, yeah, we got just a couple more. This is from the European Central Bank. Bitcoin has failed to become a global decentralized digital currency, instead falling victim to fraud and manipulation. While I agree with the first half, the recent approval of an ETF doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin is costly, slow, inconvenient, um, whatever. Uh, do people really care about the European Central Bank? Pretty funny that they came out. Uh, so, sh like, <laughs> Bitcoin has failed. Um, yeah, obviously, they don't like Bitcoin. Ironically, Bitcoin. part of that's true. Bitcoin has kind of failed its original mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, when you, when you read the write-up, it's like all the things we kind of say, right? It's, it, they basically are saying it has no utility. It's just used for speculation. And to, to I mean, yeah, that, right. to a large point, that's, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but what, what they do, like what, if you read the, uh, the notes down here, right? So what, what they're being criticized for is, you know, they're, pro they're basically saying Bitcoin is only used for speculation. There has two use cases. One, spec speculation, which is 99% of it. And the other use case is for, for crime is what they're trying to argue. And yeah, that, that part, that part is, 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 a, is a pretty dumb statement to make given 
uh, when you compare it to the fiat and the U.S. dollar, right? So chain analysis is, is calling out here, or this fact down here at the bottom, the uh, the reader's notes or whatever, um, that it's actually a very small, uh, uh, yeah, as far as they know, right, a very small percentage of, of Bitcoin transactions are being used for criminal activity. Most crimes are uh, are done using fiat currency, so that means we should get rid of fiat, right? Because it's dangerous to people, it's dangerous to uh, society, which that yeah. statement's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. We um, we've got. Let's see. There's a couple more. Um, Here's a quick new feature in Cake Wallet. Uh, well, it's just kind of an adaptation to an existing feature. Now, when you put in somebody's handle for whether it be X or the Noster Nip 5 or Mastodon, it'll pull up uh, like a little profile for them in a nice way. That's really, really cool. I love that. Yeah, so a very simple change, but it makes it uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, just more personable, nicer to use. I don't, I don't use the... Um... The Twitter pay thing enough. I gotta start. I gotta start using it. The bird, you know, the bird pay aspect. It's pretty sweet feature because just... uh, all you have to do is just put in you yeah. know their handle. It's like oh, it's there, and now now it shows uh, the profile picture, so you can you know further confirm that it is actually the right person. I, I, I gotta say, I did tell Vic this idea years ago. Years ago, I'm gonna. <laughs> I, can throw, I can throw that out there. I, I have the message. You got, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up on the screen on Telegram. Uh, but I think it's great. Are we, are we seeing adoption of it? I mean, it's um, it's really quite slick. Yeah. Um. I don't have. I don't know exactly how many people are using it. Um. But I certainly do. If I if I need if I donate to someone who's who's on like X or or Nost yeah. Noster. Um. And That's I know cool. other people use it. And Vic, but of course, Vic uses it a lot. So. So he's trying to get people to put their uh, address in their profile. The uh, the the Venmo of crypto, the super private version of Venmo, is what cake is cake is becoming. It's the easiest easiest way to use money privately. And then we've got trading volume on cake. Well, is insane. People picking up XMR like it's going out of stock. So I'm guessing that has to do with uh, buys on DFX and then also swaps. So yeah. Monero's hot right yeah. now. Monero's hot. Yeah, Vic must be loving the, these delistings, the right? I mean, they uh, it's pushing people. Cake is becoming the you know the easiest way to to ape into Monero to grab some Monero. And of course, uh, this this might partially be why we're seeing a a difference between the local, like a bigger difference in local Monero street price versus like Kraken's price. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been a little bit larger uh, than it, it has been historically. So. Yeah, uh, I think I think Tony is trying to come up now, <laughs> but uh, we've uh, hey, what's up, Tony? I think we did all the news. Tony, hey guys, <laughs> what's going on? We're, <laughs> we're not we're start good. we're not starting from the beginning, Tony. I'm sorry, we're not doing it. Oh no, that's fine. That's, <laughs> no, that's fine. Kidding. That's perfect. What's up, man? Um, no, so you guys, I'm still actually I left live on, and then when I came back inside because I had to do some mud work, I was hearing people, and I was like, who's in my house? And then I forgot that I, I had the live stream still on. And, they're looking uh, for your Monero. It's yeah. us, man. It's us. But they're not going to find it because... Uh, you lost maybe it. I lost some, maybe I... Exactly. Um, yeah, you know what? So let's... I'm actually going to just like chime in and then we can... You can share the screen if that's fine. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Do you need me yeah. to go to an article? Um, There's just two more. So... It was this one and then the next one is interesting actually yeah, oh yeah the, the btc uh mining lawsuit mining yep that, that one is really interesting so uh, yeah, sure. bring, bring it up bring it up all right oh so, yeah i had this up on i had the actual here we go here's the actual article page yeah so the u.s government agrees to destroy bitcoin mining data gathered so this is really huge the fact that um texas blockchain council lawsuits successfully stopped the Biden administration from government data collection on Bitcoin miners. They're trying to collect the data. Um, and um, yeah, the lawsuit was uh, successful from, from stopping them, hmm. uh, which I'm really happy about because that was a concern um, before. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I missed the story. This is interesting. And uh, yeah, and the government also agreed to destroy the data collected. So not only 
where they stop from doing that, but also they they destroy the data that have they have collected so far from the Bitcoin miners. And the date they were just trying to uh, collect data on who who the miners were and things like that, or furthermore, the US government survey. Um, I'm not aware of exactly what data they were gathering, but I assume. Uh, oh, go up a little bit. I was just streaming. It. Uh, yeah, they can, the blood to blockchain council felt that the survey was invasive and would ruin the business of miners. Mm. Okay, interesting. All right, seems like uh, that's a positive for the Bitcoin mining industry in, it's a in w. Texas. But yeah, Bitcoin mining. <laughs> But the thing is, that's only in Texas. We'll how, yeah, we'll see how, how that pans out on a federal level. Exactly. Yeah, because that's only in Texas. So I hope he's going to go beyond Texas. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good news. So uh, let's go to the next one. Um, this is the last one. I didn't do them in order, but this should no, be the fine. last one. Um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I did see this earlier this week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this. D did you cover the one on CoinGecko where... Um, Oh yeah, before yep. they killed Monero, but now they don't. Yeah. <laughs> Monero is one of the top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get we covered that. That's crazy. And not even Zcash or yeah, even Zcash just... supposed to be like number two or three, but they didn't even put it that in there, which is like no. crazy. Yeah, and they just ignored Monero. I'm just like just completely. So that's quite wild, but um, yeah. It's so private, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, but th th this is cool. Monero ring signatures for voting or anonymous surveys. Did you know that you could use ring signatures for real crypto voting or to gathering fully? Yeah, all right, pulling up the site. Um, oh. So they're kind of building building a voting system using the ring signature component of Monero. Is that what's going on here? Yes. Uh, yeah, which is going to be interesting once. Uh you know, surface is going to, to be implemented because then it's just going to be. Um, yeah. We'd like to have, get these guys on the show or on Monero talk, kind of understand fully what they're doing here. It's an interesting concept. Obviously like yeah. this has nothing really, this isn't like they're not using, I don't think Monero per se, they're using a piece of Monero tech to oh, yeah. build out a, an anonymous voting system. I don't know if they're using Monero's implementation specifically, or if this is just mm -hmm. another way to do like reading signatures. Mm hmm. So that's cool. Very cool to see. That's you know another arm in the fight, right? We need we need digital yeah. cash, uh, and then we need a way for people to uh, vote anonymously online, right? That's another another tool we need in our quiver for maintaining our, our this liberty in the digital age. Signature using Monero code base functions, so it has the same security as the original Monero code. There you go. Right there. Oh, if that's true. Cool. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, so we'll try to get these uh, get these guys in a Monero talk. I like it. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be awesome. This week we had a lot of interesting news. Uh, Argentina and then <clears throat> the Ethereum XMR atomic swap integration to the GUI. Um, a lot of interesting stuff. Trocador's new function, uh, Denver Meetup. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Email leaks. Yeah. We had a lot, a lot of stuff. We covered it all.